It's a tractor that's literally plowing our driveway. We have it at my house, so he wants to sleep. He's trying to convince my parents. It's my dad. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm hoping is that we're going to do, um, we are, we will do number one in the exercises, um, and maybe we'll start number two. So what I've done is I've handed you guys out um, what your what your roles are, and I've got um, Jennifer and Jonathan. What does your, your sign say so everybody knows? Student What's that? We're the student representation. And what else does it say underneath your sign? Against red ribbon. Okay, so. Jonathan and Jennifer are against the wearing of the red ribbon, okay? Um, and by the way, if you flip that over, flip it over for a second, if we get to number two on the exercises, that'll be your roles today. If not, if we don't get to number two, we'll, you know, I'll collect them and we'll do that on Thursday. Then I have Joe and John, also student reps, but you are? We're for the red ribbon. For the red ribbon, okay? And then I have two teachers here, Nicole, and Laura. Um, so, Laura, you're? I'm a teacher for the Red Ribbon. Okay. I'm not. And you're against. And then Jim by, is by himself. He's one parent who is going to be? Against. Okay. And then the two Amandas are also parents. Four. Okay. So what we're going to suppose here is that, um, you know, the school became aware of the plan to wear Red Ribbons during, you know, the month of February in this junior you know, high school. So we're having this, this sort of assembly um, to get sort of everybody's views, everybody's side. Um, let's suppose that you know, the teachers have knowledge you know, of the law, you know, the case law, you know, the statute, et cetera. Um, maybe on the, the two Amandas, um, um, Amanda said it, you see, you're not hooked up to your computer, so you might not have the cases in front of you, but. Yeah, I um, did my brief though. Okay. Um, do, one of you might have some, in fact, do you want, one of you could be a parent and a, say you're an attorney as well, which one wants to be that? Assume that role. I could be the attorney. Okay, all right. Amanda, if you're just a parent and you're, you're, you're gonna express like your personal, your personal views. Um, same with you, Jim. All right, parent, and you're expressing personal views. Um, you might have learned through your child what your. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you for or against? I have against. Okay. You might have learned through your child, you know, some of the sort of rationale or law behind it. So feel free, you know. If, but you're not, you're not necessarily citing law as an attorney. Okay. Kids as well, you've learned some of these cases in your civics, you know, in, in your classes from the teachers, but again, you're speaking from a student's point of view, all, all four of you. Um, I'm the principal or vice principal, it doesn't matter, whatever, um, just sort of conducting this, um, um, this debate. Anybody have questions before we start? What I'll do is I'll assume the role, and then I'll go around the room, and you could you know use your own name, or you can make up your name if you want as teacher, or parent, or et cetera, Amanda. So how far in the process are we? The school has found out. That they're found going out to through yeah, I found out through the local you know the the, the gay straight alliance at the school that the plan was that during the month of February, say where you know, say it's January thirty first or something, um, that the plan was, and then junior high. Let's make it junior high kids so they're a little bit younger. Um, they're planning to do this, and there was a little bit, you know, to do about it. That then there might be um, situations that develop. And feel free to make up facts if you want. Teachers too, maybe conversations you heard in the classroom or that students had with you. Okay, so assume your roles. John. So this is a plan for February, or has it? This yeah. has already occurred. No, it has not already occurred. So that's why I'm I'm trying to make the decision as the school administrator right. whether we're going to um, not allow it. All right. Gotcha. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. I assembled everybody here. Um, Ms. Caldis, the um, um, assistant vice principal, the principal is out today. Um, I know some of you are here, but let's just go around the room and have you introduce yourself, starting with my te two teachers here. I'm Laura Lowry, I'm teacher Wait. of the eighth grade. Okay. Uh, What's your, quickly, just your position, Laura? Oh, my position is that um, my students plan to wear red ribbons this month on February 14th in support of AIDS, and I support that. Okay. Uh, my 
name is Nicole Grimes. I am the sixth grade teacher, and my students want to wear the red ribbon, but I do not want to allow that in my classroom. Thank you. And I have some parents here, too. I'm Amanda Phillips, and I want my child to be able to wear the red ribbon to school. I am Amanda Senate Council for Amanda Phillips. Here on this matter. Oh, okay. You're also a parent? Yes. I'm a eighth grader, my okay. daughter. Thank you. Yes, my name is Jim Jones, and I am staunchly opposed as a parent to uh, allowing my daughter to wear this people. Okay. And we have the students introduce themselves, and these are uh, representatives of the student body here. Hello, I'm Jennifer Rios, and I support Mary Lou Hi, I'm student rep for wearing the red ribbon. Okay, all right. Um, since it's the, the, the I, it's the student's position that they want to be able to do, do this fairly uh, quickly, um, and I need to make the decision or at least we put to the principal and maybe the town council as well. Um, let me start with what the student's position is. And that would be either John or Joseph if you want to start. And well, and it's our First Amendment right to free speech, to wear whatever we want, as long as it's not disrupting the classroom or causing uh, havoc. So we feel that expressing our opinions by wearing these ribbons in support of uh, AIDS research is uh, perfectly fine. We, we see no reason why we shouldn't be able to wear them. Uh, yeah, furthermore, we, uh, we feel that the ribbons do not materially and substantially interfere with the discipline. You, you think that it won't uh, interfere with the discipline? Is that what you're saying? No, you're not. Because it's a, it's a non-disruptive, um, silent protest. We're not protesting. Support. Uh, what about the students against? Uh, we disagree. Uh, we think that while it is a noble cause, uh, there are students that have differing opinions. And as such, uh, it may create a ground for uh, arguments, fights, um, that could substantially affect, um, as uh, the opposing rep said, it could substantially affect the discipline of the school and the what uh, the daily function of the school in, in terms of like the fighting between the students. <coughs>
Arguments can happen where you have, let's say there's two friends, one supports the red ribbon wearing and the other one doesn't. And now you have differing of opinions. They're young. They don't need to be exposed to AIDS to begin with. They don't need to be exposed to how AIDS can come about and things like that. So it just forms this, this barrier between friends and, and classmates and it, cause, it causes a division in the classroom. Jim, you're a parent. Yes, I am, and I, I believe that the children are, at, at this early age are not wise enough to uh, to support or reject uh, this cause. Uh, although I find the cause normal, uh, I think that uh, constitutional rights of students at, at school are not automatically uh, extended as they would be uh, with adults. And I think that uh, education uh, in the classroom is, is what we're there for. to the extent uh, that it would disrupt other students who are not uh, in agreement with the learning group. Have you learned specifically from your child and from other children what potentially what, what potential disruptions there might be? I, I've just heard from my own child that there's been uh, some discourse between the students as, as to uh, AIDS itself and, and how, how it's started things of that nature. Um, so I don't think that they're at the educational level where they fully understand uh, you know, the full dynamics behind the wearing of the ribbon. And it, it could lead to uh, misconceptions and, and, uh, and other, other uh, confrontations that, that uh, the school hasn't addressed or thought about. Yet. Okay. Ms. Senna, are you Ms. Phillips? Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding that my child is not prohibited to wear this ribbon by the dress code of the school. Um, no violence has happened yet, and this would be a teaching exercise for the students to respect others' opinions and others' um, viewpoints on the matter. If some were to wear ribbons and some weren't to wear ribbons. And I feel that my child has a right to wear a ribbon to school. And I, also, lawyer, yeah. I also agree with my client. Our daughters go to school together. I. Um, support my daughter if she wants to wear this ribbon. I feel that everybody's entitled to support who and what they want as they wish be because of the freedom of speech clause of the First Amendment. Um, it's not causing any violence. It's showing support of a group. And as for trying to shelter our children from learning about AIDS, I don't feel like that's the right thing to do because nowadays children are having sex at a younger age. I feel like if they're more educated and they know about age, they can try and prepare themselves um, or try and um, educate themselves so that they don't harm themselves in the future where it could be something they deal with. So question for, for everyone to consider it first, and I'm hearing sort of generally um, what the law behind some of your answers are, um, and of course I'm concerned with, you know, the law itself, this is the member of the school board here, um, and you know, whether the school may or may not be violating the students' constitutional rights on the one hand to expression, but on the other hand, the school may not adequately be, you know, protecting the student body. So um, what is the, the, the statute itself that we have in Massachusetts, chapter 71, section 82, which does provide um, this freedom of expression in the public schools, um, and that it shall not be abridged is what the statute says, right? Provided that it's that that such right doesn't cause disruption or disorder. So I have to be careful that um, it, it, if you know the, if the administration here at the school decides that it's going to forbid the wearing of the red ribbons, I have to be careful that it doesn't violate um, this statute. Um, I've heard Laura talk about case law, and she mentioned, you know, um, without mentioning the U.S. Supreme Court case of uh, Tinker um, that dealt with the wearing of the black armbands during the Vietnam War. So, uh, considering sort of those two, um, on the one hand, as well as a recent Supreme Court case, the Morris v. Frederick um, case, um, that might might change things up a little bit. I wonder what everybody's thoughts are regarding, you know, um, regarding those two sort of avenues 
of um, authority that this school should be following? Um, and anyone can answer that first. I'd like everybody to consider it, though. Laura, do you want to start? Yes, I'd like to. Okay. I, I think with Morse, um, that was inconsistent with the education of the children you know, because it was um, marijuana. If you could, not everybody knows a lot here, oh. so if you could just Sorry. Uh, um, briefly just, you know. So in, in Morse, um, they were at a school outing um, outside of the school, but it was a school sanctioned event. All the students were there. And um, one boy held a 14-foot banner um, in full display of the other students that said, um, Bong hits for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the principal. What was the uh, event? You said it was a school sponsored event. It was um, the, in preparation for the Olympics, it was the running of the torch. And because it was going directly by the school, the principal said, um, you know, we'll take this hour or so and we'll make it a school event and they can go watch the torch be run by. Um, and mm -hmm. this student, when the press came by, the student flashed um, and unfurled the 14-foot banner mm -hmm. to get attention. Um, she uh, told him to take it down, and mm -hmm. um, the Supreme Court held that she was correct and that it was inconsistent with the messages that the school was trying to teach, um, and that you had to balance the uh, First Amendment constitutional rights with um, trying to keep the, um, the school environment you know, in balance and not disruptive, and they ruled in, in the principle. So, I, I mean, I, I mean I, I'm assuming that Nicole and the people in this room that are uh, against the wearing of the red ribbon w would be cited, most of you, Fredericks. Um, so, I'm wondering why you are, so, I, I use Citing it to just stick to say, you know, it really has nothing to do with what's going on here, or well, I'd like to differentiate it because, uh -huh. um, where uh, clearly alcohol abuse and um, the use of controlled substances is against what we're trying to teach in the middle school, um, at our school with the sex education class, as well as um, safety, that you know, we have sixth through eighth graders and we are talking to them about these subjects, and while they may not be the easiest subjects to talk but, about. But here's my question, and I don't know if the rest of you, again, that are against this position are thinking, that if the wearing of a red ribbon is not an illegal sort of act. It's not a, you know, not that it, right. what the student friend in and of itself was illegal, but it was promoting, right, what that's, was then illegal. That, that's what I was trying to say is I, I think some of the parents, when we went around the room, were concerned that this whole topic might be uh, too heavy for children of our our, our ages, and I, I think that this is a good topic to talk about in um, actually prevention of AIDS and safety and things like that. I, I think it is within the curriculum of what we're trying to. Does either Nicole or someone else want to respond? That's on the other side. Want to respond to that? You know, using progress to to make your point. For go ahead. I know what I want to say. I'm just trying to formulate it. So if someone wants to. Any other student reps? Which, which ones are against? John, yeah. Jonathan and uh, Janet? Um, I would lean towards the teacher. Um, so I don't know if you want me to. The, okay, so did, how, does, how does Tinker apply and tell the, the, I was going to say tell the class, tell, tell us here what you learned, you know, about Tinker and how it applies to wearing the red ribbons. Um, well, in the decision in Tinker, it said that um, the court held that um, in order to justify the suppression of the speech, the school officials would have to prove that it would basically interfere with the students' learning. And as other people in the court um, had discussed, this could separate students from each other, and that would affect the learning environment. Is it, is it just that it has to, is that the test? Is it just that it has to interfere with learning? Well, and what does interfering with learning really mean, Jonathan? Um, I wasn't going to say that, but no, go ahead. I had something to, to add. Um, to add? Go ahead, add. Um, it has nothing to do with what you were saying. Okay, no, I was going to go back to the Frederick's. Okay, all right. Um, that uh, consistent with this case where the children or where the, where the students would be allowed to wear uh, a, a ribbon, uh, a 
about about AIDS or sexual se sexual activity um, consistent with the Fredericks case, it could be perceived as to advocating sexual activity uh, in the children. So um, that could be something that would um, go towards your decision as to letting the, letting the kids or um, or barring the children from wearing from wearing uh, the pins about AIDS, pretty much. Um, because in the Fredericks case, the, um, the portion of the banner that had uh, reference of a hit of a bomb um, could be seen as advocating for that, um, for drug use. So, um, yeah. Does it matter, though, that in the Fredericks case, it was, as Laura pointed out, sort of, you know, it was during a school sort of activity that the school was seeking the, I don't know, I forget, was it the vice principal, I think, in that case. It doesn't matter who it was, but it was one of the administrators. Um, do, does it matter that it was during the school activity that the school was seeking to, um, you know, suppress sort of the um, speech, <laughs> right, of this student? Whereas here, it's not necessarily during a school activity, it's the children, like the children in Tinker, that are just wearing, you know, wearing a silent form of expression, Nicole? Um, in the Frederick case, um, it, it states clearly that the First Amendment does not require schools to tolerate at school events student expression that contributes to those dangers. Um, and the dangers are, you know, promoting illegal drug use. Okay, but you just said it, you just, said it, exactly what I just said, at school events. Yeah. So does this red red ribbon wearing uh, compromise a school event? Well, it's during school, it's during well, school hours. Yeah. It's during school hours, but it's the student coming in wearing, you know, his or her form of expression as, oppo as opposed to a specific school event where a, you know a student is well, is, the school, Go ahead. is the school going to announce this as you know and then you know next week we'll all be wearing our Good ribbons point. to yeah. support so if that automatically states it's an event that's going on in the school so you can argue that okay so you're saying that if if i you know i make the decision of, you know along with the other administrators here that it's okay for say that you know this, this particular student group and whoever, whatever other student wants to wear the ri red ribbons and sort of an announcement that people may be doing this during the month of February. You're saying that that's a school-sponsored type of event? Is that what you're well, saying? Well, the school's supporting it and backing it up. So, I mean, you have different groups of people. Like, let's say you have the band who's mm -hmm. going to be having a concert, and you okay. announce it over the intercom. It's an event taking place in the school where people will come and support it, and the school supports it and allows it to happen. Therefore, what is the difference here? Okay. Somebody was. Uh, does, I, Laura had her hand up first, and I see other hands. I think so. This you have to respond specifically now to that yeah, point. It, the school okay. event is um, so it, it's extending. There's a school, and then school event is to extend like the school environment, and I think that's to differentiate it from a park or a sidewalk or an open area. So while I agree with you, it's a school uh, event. It, it's both are on considered part of the school. Day, so I, I, I'm agreeing with you, but I'm just differentiating. You're agreeing right. with her. Yeah. Yeah, you're on the opposite side. So what are you agreeing about exactly? Because I'm assuming you're not going to concede that that the wearing of the red ribbons. No, so no, no. I'm just agreeing that I, I think that school event um, is just extending what is the definition of school for purposes of the First Amendment right. But okay, I'm still not following you. <laughs> is the wearing of the red ribbons a similar kind of school event or, or school sponsored sort of thing to the, the Frederick case? So it's both, whether they wear it during the day or it took place outside, like the banner, it's within the school environment. Who had, I think Joe had his hand up right along, at, right yeah. after Laura, so I'll move from you. I got, I got a little thrown off here, but. Uh, That's okay. No, what I was going to say was that I was just going to ask where, where is the danger involved here? I can understand what the danger involved in having a banner with you know, promoting drug use where the school could be affiliated with that. 
well, where is the danger involved in having the school affiliated with wearing on the wet crowd record? And, and is that some sort of test when you say where is the danger? What, what again, I'm concerned with the legal implications well, of, uh, my, of my decision here, so. Well, um, they, they have to have, it has to have some, their, it has to have some sort of uh, relevance and that um, the, they have to, that there's risk that there's going to be substantial disruption. Disruption, and, okay. And so, so that's the test. Okay. So look, I mean, I think that everybody here could agree that, you know, students, even students, young students, right, have some constitutional rights, have some rights to freedom of expression, but that those rights are not absolute. So is this a case when that that I need or the administration needs to sort of um, you know curtail those rights because of a specific reason? I so is it, it, yeah, have, yeah. Have the facts been changed now to, to where it's a school sponsored event? And no, no, I'm sponsored. still trying to understand that, whether it is or it isn't, okay. and try to understand it I, in the context of Frederick, in the context of Okay, because from what I understood was that this was just going to be individual people. I mean, although there may have been conversing on, on the side, but this is a group of individuals. A group of students that right. want to and do it, and I've heard through my it. teachers that the, in, there might be issues. Mm -hmm. So the school is trying to decide whether we're going to allow the, you know, the students to do it or not. Jim had his hand up. I'll come back to you guys. Just a, the question of, of whether there's an organized uh, school event, uh, it, it, would, it would, in all due respect, it would be foolish not to believe that for an entire month where students are wearing uh, these bands, that they would not be participating in school sanctioned events outside of the classroom. Uh, it's the month of February, there's, uh, I know there's a, my son plays on the basketball team, and there's two or three cheerleaders that want to wear the ribbons, and they're going to be representing the basketball team outside the school, which I would consider a school event uh, in, a, in another, another part of town. That's an interesting point. So okay. I want to just piggyback mm -hmm. on that, that I, I do think that it's going to be part of uh, a school event versus just in the classroom. Okay. Um, I think Jennifer had a hand up earlier too. Um, I, I want to just briefly discuss the whole school event and individual wearing. I think it's kind of like what um, she was talking about. I think it would be a school event if it was said like on Tuesday all the students are going to wear a red ribbon to support AIDS, but because it's individual, I feel like that's where the materially and substantial interference can occur. I feel as though because it's individual students that are take, taking it upon themselves to support a noble cause, don't get me wrong, but I think that would interfere with the teaching environment as a whole. Mm -hmm. Because because it's kind of like what Jim just said to you, um, students are going to leave the classroom. And when you leave, we're all representations of the school. The school might not want outsiders to know that they're supporting AIDS or not supporting AIDS, whatever it may be. I feel like that's an individual, what you think, that doesn't need to be broadcast to everyone else. That makes sense. Okay. Um, maybe the parents here, um, who are supposed to be older, um, <laughs> know something of the history of the Tinker case. And, and whether that's more similar um, in terms of what I have to decide here today than the Frederick case. I don't know if anybody can shed some light on that or not. Laura might, because she teaches in that area as well. So yeah. if you want to start yeah, so a conversation um, about how it, Tinker came to it, the Supreme Court. Tinker, it, you know, it was during the Vietnam War, and mm -hmm. um, some families got together about the wearing of black arm bands in support of um, our, our troops in Vietnam, and the children were part of it. It was a like a family thing that happened outside of school, and they decided that for a period of time over the holidays they would wear black arm bands, and um, some of the kids went in both in high school and I think there was one in junior high, and they were suspended. 
and um, it was held in favor of the children who wore it that they had rights in light of the school environment that were available to both teachers and students. Um, and of course, the balancing that the court did was the school officials have to control conduct. Um, and and, and I've heard that already, the description and sort of the test, but yeah. what I'd like um, this everybody in here to, to consider and, and hear is, you know, sort of the atmosphere in which that happened and is it similar to what I'm hearing here about the potential disruption in, in classrooms from wearing of red ribbons? Is it similar, is it different? I, I personally believe that it's very similar. It's, um, you know, something to show support. And, um, but what happened back then? What was the atmosphere? What did the mean? What was the meaning of the black armband? What did? What kind of effect did it have um, on other on others, Joe? Well, I know that it gave a lot, it was, the tensions were high at the time, and that if you wore a black armband, you could be considered as anti-war or anti-American. Anti-American. Okay. And so that could obviously make things combative, and have people say, you know. Soldier, maybe even so, people have family members. And, and, and so yeah, I and there were a lot of a lot of protests, um, for, not only within the context of these youngsters wearing the black armbands, you know, in schools and government, etc. Um, it was a very volatile issue, but yet the Supreme Court held, and that's why the Massachusetts legisla legislature also wrote it into this uh, statute 7182. That, uh, that students have the right to, to freedom of expression, to express their views, even if their views might be a po unpopular and cause some, some, some sort of dissension. Um, it, I don't know, and Nicole? Um, the First Amendment does protect students for having a freedom of speech and, and expression and all of that, but in Hazelwood School District, um, that's a case um, from the Supreme Court, um, they also stated that the public schools are not considered a public forum and therefore if there is no public forum that's been established, um, the school does have a right to But that was different and we'll consider that in the next forum as well. That had to do with, you know, publication with publishing and it also had to do with, uh, you know, school sponsored newspaper, etc. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at, you know, the, the most uh, uh, similar fact-wise having to do with a silent form of expression. I'm touching my arm because I'm thinking of the black armbands. <laughs> and then I'm also, you know, you're going to wear the red ribbon just like the wearing of the red, of the black armbands. And the wearing of black armbands, even if you look at the dissent in the, the Supreme Court opinion of, of, of Tinker, it did cause, a, you know, there was a lot of craziness then, a ton of craziness. Yeah. People walking out in the streets, uh, you know, young kids were, you know, getting detentions, getting suspended over it, and yet the Supreme Court still held that kids could do this. So again, I'm concerned that if I, if I find that, you know, a handful of kids in my school can't wear a red ribbon, you know, what sort of liability am I going to cause to the school district? So that's my problem. Um, who else was against? So I could call on um, Jonathan. Um, I wanted to get back to the Tinker case to, to uh, have some, some uh, maybe a quote or something to support um, what I was going to say, but um, as far as the liability for, for you, if you for the school, or yeah. for the school, um, yeah. Yeah. the difference in the Tinker case was that that was an individual, uh, an individual sanctioned activity that was made outside of school. Tinker? It was made by the parents, by the parents of the students. No, student. kids went in school right. wearing black armbands. Right, the kids in your school want to wear red ribbons. Right, no, but the, the, it was done, the, the, it was, uh, what, what do I say, the uh, origin of it occurred outside of school, and it was an individual, by the parents, and it was, and it was brought into the school from outside the school. Here, what differentiates this case is that it's, being made as a school activity, so it could the, be okay. Stop right there. Does student reps agree with that? No, this is not but, a school activity, as far as we're concerned. Okay, it's just a, it's just us voicing our opinion. And as far as Tinker goes, 
the facts in that case were made, made it more volatile. I mean, this is just a watered down version of Tinker. There's nothing volatile about uh, being pro uh, pro AIDS awareness by wearing a, a red ribbon. I mean, if anything, they should focus more on the bullying that, that we're going to be subjected to by other students, and perhaps uh, you know. Well, can we, can we that raises a good point for the other side, and that, that's probably why they're all jumping up and down right now. Um, again, the school concerned, and I said it before, about your individual rights as well as you know the, the rights of the student body in, in, in general. John, if you're going to wear the red ribbon and walk into a flowers class, and somebody you know is going to call you a fag, and you know this, you know that that presents some problems or issues. So in the end, wouldn't the administration <laughs> be protecting you more by not allowing you to wear a red ribbon? They school? might they might think that, but <laughs> it's really hurting us more by mm -hmm. um, by, but, by allowing these bullies to uh, run things at, at school. Nicole had a hand up. Could you flip it ahead. and say that those who are wearing a red ribbon versus those who are not wearing a red I'm ribbon? Sorry, I'm sorry. Start again. I'm couldn't you could, couldn't you flip it around and, and say, say that? that those who are wearing a red ribbon, they're saying they're going to be bullied because they're wearing a red ribbon and they may be called a fag or whatever you just said they would be called. Well, how come you can't flip it and say that the students who aren't wearing a red ribbon wouldn't be bullied from the people wearing a red ribbon, saying you don't support people, you're, you're um, anti-homophobe, yeah, you know, so can't so you flip it So either way, around? are you going back to the test of Tinker that um, even though Tinker is, is same on facts, that, uh, but the school, uh, yeah, this school needs still needs to follow the test behind Dick Tinker. Mm -hmm. That um, while the wearing of the red ribbon might, in and of itself, be a nice idea, that it's going to no matter what, it's going to cause disruption. Yes, either way, you're going to have disruption. You're either going to have people bullying people for wearing a red ribbon and calling them a fag, or you're going to call have the red ribbon people calling the people who aren't wearing a red ribbon a homophobe. So either way, you have this tension now that shouldn't have been created to begin with. Just keep your opinions to yourself, and if you choose to support it, do it elsewhere. Let me go over here, I haven't heard from Amanda Phillips. But is so my long. child allowed to have an opinion? Isn't he allowed to voice his opinion in school where he is learning? As in Tinker, they should have been, a mm -hmm. uh, court held that they were allowed to bring their opinions. The, the marketplace of ideas, yes. different viewpoints, et cetera. Uh, somebody want to respond to that? Yeah. Do it, uh, well, do no, I'm, I'm for it. I'm for it. So oh, okay. To rebut that and I can come back. Somebody want to respond to that? I want to call. All right. I'll, I'll let you go. Okay. Yes, I agree that children should have a right to to express themselves, and as a parent, you should have a right to support your child in the expression that they want to to give to the school. However, don't the other students who don't support the red ribbon and and the teachers who don't support the red ribbon don't they have a right to come to attention free school a safe zone where they don't have to worry about whose opinion matters to who that we're all just in school we're learning the same things and we're moving forward you know what i mean so mm -hmm. don't they have a right to a safe bully free zone Joe. Uh, well i feel like that preventing the students from wearing red ribbons could pr prove a slippery slope down the line because you know we just want to make sure that we're not prohibiting more political opinion here and that uh, that there is clear evidence that wearing a red ribbon would materially disrupt things and just to comment on one thing from what i understand isn't, isn't this a very small minority that would be wearing ribbons or just like half the school well it looks like the gay straight alliance for sure uh, and and perhaps others that that support that student group that's what i'm assuming Okay, I'm going to be wearing. Okay, um, and it might mushroom more and more. Tinker, I mean, I don't know if they're going to be handing out the red ribbons or. It, from the Tinker case, mm -hmm. I, it was a very, very small minority. If I, if I recall, correct on that, it was three out of out of hundreds. Yeah, but but it but the it's the thing with Tinker though, it was a test case. I mean, students throughout the nation, just, in one form or another, were I wanted to protest. So this to small group, you know. I was just going to respond to why, we, why things might But does it matter whether it's a small group well, or it not? Well, it does. I'm just responding to her comment that, oh, okay. well, why, why can't we just flip things? And when it's a very small minority, it's very hard for a very small minority to group, uh, uh, to bully a large group of people because strength comes in numbers. That's not true. But I, I think... Three people point, versus 1,800? 
Well, yes, but you also have the three people who can gain allies from other places. You also, I mean, it takes well, one person to bully <laughs> one other person. You know, you read the news cases where you have kids where one kid harassed this other kid so severely they committed suicide. That's one on one. It takes one. Yeah, we're not so you result. can't do the ratio thing because certain kids are going to come in contact with other kids. The 1,800 kids, three kids cannot possibly come in contact with 1,800 kids. I went to a big high school. I didn't have contact with 1,800 of them. I was experience. communicating with I feel with like there's a greater people. possibility of three people being bullied as opposed to 1,800 people. But they're not three. saying there's only three people wearing this ribbon. It's a school event. So I, I was referring to the Tinker The statute that was enacted after Tinker in this in this Commonwealth says at the end of it, and I don't know whether this sort of ties it up, but I'm not sure. It said no, because we're talking about school sponsored as well. No expression made by students in the exercise of such rights shall be deemed to be an expression of school policy. And no school officials, and of course that's what I keep getting concerned about myself, <laughs> shall be held responsible in any civil or criminal action for any expression made or published by the students. So again, no expression made by students in the exercise of such rights shall be deemed to be an expression of school policy. What about the teachers? So, uh, what about the teachers who express themselves? It's no, no, no. This has to do with the, whether the students here that want to wear red ribbons mm -hmm. have a right to do so, um, whether the school is going to agree that they have that right, or whether the school is going to make the decision that, uh, you know what, um, that right is not absolute. Um, the school is concerned with the potential, again, disruption or disorder. Um, and then another question that's been brewing in my mind as well, um, while you know, Tinker is the, the leading case and, ha and has been for years in terms of um, student expression, the latest case was most the rhetoric. And so does, did that erode at all sort of the holding of Tinker, or does most of the Frederick only apply in certain, you know, in certain instances, and this is, and, and is this not one of those instances? So you can respond to anything I just said, because I rattled off maybe three different issues. I mean, Phillips. I believe this is not one of those instances, as in Morse, because the banner in Morse was for promoting an illegal act. My child wants to wear a ribbon that is in support of AIDS awareness and that is actually helping society as opposed to the banner in Morse, which was, again, supporting an illegal act. So it's distinguished in that. Okay. Anybody have a thought as to that, at that point? <coughs> and we can move on to another point, but to that. I just have one yeah, point. Sure. Just because it's an illegal act it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hurt humanity. Just bong, because bong what? I'm sorry? Bong hits for Jesus. I don't, oh. I don't necessarily think that's going to hurt humanity, even though we're on the same side here. I, it, it was deemed an illegal act, and the whole purpose of it was to promote an illegal act. But I don't. I think um, promoting bong hits as well as promoting AIDS awareness both are in the right direction. But wasn't humanity. that also, again, combined with the fact that that occurred within the context of a school-sponsored event? And then right. we come back again to whether a <laughs> wearing of the red ribbons is in fact a school event or not. I don't know if you want to come back to that. Well, no, just because, yeah, because in Morse, it's a, definitely a school sponsored event. It's going it's, it to could hurt the school's reputation if they are seen to not discipline that kind of behavior. So, in, in, so in that, that's, that's why I feel like that's, that's good. But I wasn't going to make that point initially. Uh, Nicole and then Laura? Um, to kind of like show how it would be a school sponsored event, um, in junior high and high school, and even sometimes in elementary school, they have this thing called Spirit Week. They announce it, they tell you what right. it's going to be, mm -hmm. but you have the choice to participate or not. So isn't that kind of the same? And they deem that a school event. There's flyers, there's things that show, you know, support this, support that, whatever, for Spirit Week, support this. But at the same time, isn't this kind of the same thing? It's kind of like a spirit week. The school is saying this is when it's going to be. It's for this month. And you if have that's a choice. the choice. Then what about what I just read that comes directly from what the law is in the Commonwealth, the statute that says no expression made by students in the exercise of such rights shall be deemed to be an expression of school policy. So anyway, if I agree with you, in what other context 
in what other context would the, the, would would that language from the statute apply? So if I agree with you that the wearing of the red ribbons was in fact more like more like um, Frederick, right? And it's a school event, all right. Then when when is it not a school event and is pure a pure expression of uh, you know uh, students' freedom of expression and not school sponsored? So you know another hypothetical. Oh well, in such and such a case, if if a student did such and such, more such and such, then it would be more like tinker. Can you think of something? Well, if a student were to just do that on their own instead of trying to make this, you know, having the school involved, then it wouldn't be considered a school. Event. What do you mean by having the school involved? Having the school support it, announce it, say we're doing AIDS support month, and you know, you have a choice. I, that's not what I've heard. What the reason why I pulled this assembly together is just that I heard that the G GSA kids and some other kids were going to be wearing red ribbons for the month of February. Um, yes, we might then sanction it in the sense that, okay, we're not going to, going to punish you for that. So we're trying to get at it earlier before you do it and, and you know, we suspend you as a result or give you a suspension. Joe? Okay, so mm -hmm. in the worst case, that is a that is a school-sponsored event and from what I get, was it mandatory to be there? Laura, do you remember? I, I don't remember what's I mean, because I think it was mandatory, and they had to because the principal's there to take event. all the kids out of school. Does does that matter? Well, yeah, it does to me because if if, if it's a school mandated thing, they're 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 putting their name on it. Therefore, their reputation could be hurt if the school's name isn't on it, and this is individualized students. Then, you know, they're not their reputation isn't necessarily being. How would you respond to what Jim said earlier? That um, and say it again. It would be at a game that. Three cheerleaders. Three cheerleaders that are going out to mm -hmm. the representation of that. At, at another so school, other another schools school, see these che cheerleaders. They have, because it's not school sponsored, they have no context. They have no idea. Mm -hmm. But, but, but is, it, is the test school, school yeah, is the test really school sponsored it, it, that gets to the heart of this? No, in no, in Morse v. Frederick, yeah. um, it was not mandated that they go. It says mm -hmm. that the mm -hmm. teacher permitted staff and student to go. Okay, good. Yeah. So they so did, she did not say you had to be there. Mm -hmm. She said you're allowed to go if you want to. Okay. So. So, so whoever, whoever went to that was, so, was going to be putting the school's name on whatever they did. Whoever went to what? what? The, the event. It wasn't mandatory. Whoever went to it. How would they put the school's name on Well, I'm saying what they did. Name. So by putting up a banner, what is you're, the real you're, you're reason why the school won in Frederick? Because it was promoting drugs, and the school didn't yeah. want to be because affiliated this kid with that. was holding a banner saying "Bond Hits for Jesus," yeah. and and why did the school teacher have the right to say, "Hey, you, take that down"? Because it was um, public forum. Well, once you make an immediate decision. Inconsistent with their educational mission. Yeah, it had no right. educational value. Well, it was inconsistent. It was actually it wasn't school right. it was Everybody's it muttering stuff. Who <laughs> should I call on? Laura. Well, it, was, it was actually an opposite of their educational mission, and that um, the school teachers and, and administrators have been given the children to safeguard, you know, they were trusted to their care. Here's another statute that. Um, really old statute in Massachusetts, and I don't remember if um, everyone has it or not, so bear with me because it's like a blank, I really want to read it. Um, has been, bear in mind that sometimes the legislature doesn't um, let old statutes stay on the books, but I think a lot of it still applies as to um, um, schools' duties to children. And it's, uh, it's 71, it's another section of chapter 71 in the school statute, section 30. And it says that instructors of youth, and this goes to what um, Laura and um, Nicole were just saying, instructors of youth shall exert their best, did I give it to you, best endeavors to impress on the minds of children and youth committed to their care and instruction, the pr principles of piety and justice and a sacred regard for truth, love of their country, and this whole list here, humanity, Benevolence, sobriety, industry, frugality, chastity, moderation, and temperance, 
Um, and those other virtues, which are the ornament of human society and the basis upon which a Republican Constitution is founded, and they shall endeavor to lead their pupils as their ages and capacities will admit into a clear understanding of the tendency of the above mentioned virtues to preserve a blah, blah, blah constitution, secure the blessings of liberty, uh, point out to them the evil tendency of the opposite vices. So it's, it's still on the books and, and um, do, again, does the school have the responsibility um, to, as in Frederick, to tell this certain group that, you know, maybe this, you know, this, what you believe freedom of expression um, should be curtailed because the school is concerned about, you know, your, your upbringing. Uh, the school being, like, again, a super parent, pounds, patriae, um, philosophy of, of the state. That's the statute, it's still in the books, Nicole. Well, the First Amendment protects your freedom of speech, but it also says it's not necessarily um, given to students as freely as it is adults. So the school has the right to, to has the responsibility to make sure that their rights are protected, however, to make sure that they are brought up in a safe environment and to ensure that they're As well as all of these virtues yeah. that I just you know read off the statute. What, if anything, does that have to do with the, the decision here, whether to allow the red ribbons or not? Jonathan? No, it's, uh, it's for the other side. But mm -hmm. I can't, I, I wouldn't want to say it. <laughs> well, distinguish it then. <laughs> well, I mean, because then you run into the problem, whereas what about AIDS awareness is not virtuous or something that's, you know, negative. Uh, morally or that list of, of virtues that you previously stated in, I mean you would get into the argument like what about our cause is is you know that is is violating that statute as far as the school being a superpower. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't want to say okay. so emotional strength. Yet, 
does, what is, what do you think that the Supreme Judicial Court would hold as to youngsters that wear t-shirts? Again, that might be con reasonably, and that was, that was the language, reasonably be considered vulgar. That is, Joe. Jo I'd say they, they, they make them, they, they allow the, the school to have its discretion. Why? Using what tests that we've just talked about? Um, using the no. Nope. Using the Tinker test. Using the Tinker test. Um, the SJC held, said that, that, that um, schools could regulate um, certainly expression, freedom of expression, if it causes disruption and disorder. Um, but just because, you know, a student might be wearing a t-shirt that's vulgar, as long as it doesn't cause disruption or disorder, but you know, on the other hand, T-shirts that are considered vulgar, whatever that means, <laughs> um, within the context of today, as opposed to um, in, in that um, in that time, it was like in the late '90s. In the, no, I think it was in the middle '90s. Um, schools could always make that argument that you know you're not going to wear that because it's causing you know all kinds of problems in the school. Um, you have to be able to show again, and it's the Tinker test that applies that's disruption and disorder. You can't just say, take that off, it's vulgar. It's yeah. take that off, or go home and change, yeah. because you're causing disruption. Um, so, um, it's really the Tinker test that applies to the situation that we just, um, so that we just talked about. Time, What's that? Yeah, my school used to do that all the time, they could turn it inside out. Yeah, inside out. Yeah. Inside out. yeah. yeah. I take it off. What's that? I wore a shirt once and made me take it off or go home. If you have another shirt on your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm everybody, sure. turn your signs over. So now we've got a debate whether the article free speech should be um, published. And let's suppose that um, this was an after school newspaper, okay, um, run by students with a you know, with a faculty advisor. So it's the faculty advisor. Who are my teachers? Laura and um, um, so the faculty advisor, the teacher, who basically is against publishing, you know, reports to the principal and says, ah, uh, you know, I think we should take this out. I don't think it should be published. And that would be you, Laura, correct? I'm against it. Because you're against. Yes. Okay. So um, again, sort of the same student groups, um, except you're opposite in terms of your your position. Um, so I've got the student reps, um, the two student reps arguing that it should be published, again, two that it shouldn't, parents and so forth, and the teachers. So um, let's get on the record, and again, I'm the vice principal here. Um, let me go around the room and everybody introduce them themselves and tell, tell me what your position is relative to whether the, this article should be published in, the, in, in this newspaper. Uh, starting with Jennifer. Hi, um, Jennifer Rios, student rep four. Um, the article should be published. Okay, you're agreeing the article should be published. Yeah. And uh, John is also a student representative yeah. uh, for the article being published. Okay. Uh, Joseph Glover, student rep. We're against the you know, against the article being published. Okay. John Tereshuk against it being published. Um, Laura Lowry, I'm one of the teachers, and I'm against it being published. Okay. I'm Nicole Grimes, I'm one of the teachers, and I am for this being published. Okay. I'm Jim Kani, a parent, and I am for it being published. Amanda Sennett, a parent of one of the pregnant teenagers, and I am against this article being published. Okay, but the article is free speech, it's not a pregnant teen teenager. Oh, I thought we were doing the case. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were doing the case, okay. It should, it should be. <laughs> 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 Amanda. Amanda Phillips and against the uh, article. Okay. Uh, let me start with Laura because she's the, the faculty advisor as well. She took a look at the article and I understand that you, you, you think that we should quash this before it even appears in the paper. Yes, I, I do. Um, this, this article was written as part of the journalism curriculum that we run, you know, and then produce the newspaper. And so it is tied to the um, school's educational mission. Um, and this 
this speech is actually inconsistent with um, everything we're trying to teach here. But it isn't part of a class. I understand the students meet, you know, after school, uh, they put the, this um, newspaper together and they dis disseminate it to, you know, the rest of the students in the school. And you're just there back with the advisor, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, but it still will be, you know, going out to all of the students in the school. Um, it still bears, you know, it, it's published under our auspices, and so it still bears kind of the seal of the school, just like a theater, uh, you know, production or a band concert. It, it is representing the school, and um, so it's not completely free speech, you know, as if it were on a park or a sidewalk, it is within the school environment. And, and there does need to be some sort of limit um, on, on some of that. Uh, Nicole? Um, well, we feel that this should be um, published. It is free speech, um, which is protected under the First Amendment right um, for these students to be able to publish this type of material into the paper. Um, it gives the students a little bit more of an idea of what's going on in the world, um, things that they may not have seen, as in the article it states that certain stories are not published on the news, and students have a right to know that, you know, racism isn't just a one-way street. So I just heard from Laura that it appears as if there's, there's um, some restriction or some right or some control of the administration probably a lot of, I'm assuming, um, a, a, as to what should be published. Um, you didn't say it, but I'm, I'm assuming, you know, we're using, you know, school uh, supplies in terms of, you know, using the school building even though it's after school and not, you know, not, not during a journalism class itself. So what, if anything, Cole, do those facts matter in terms of what the administration should decide here. Well, if this yeah. is going to, you know, deal with strictly the school, you now is this paper being published anywhere else besides the school? No, it, I guess it's disseminated to students at the school. Right, you know. So I assume they're gonna, they, they, they put it online and put drafts of it, you know, uh, um, printouts of it, you know, um, alongside the hallways or disseminated within, you know, to other students. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the students will also, once they read this, um, they will take it, you know, obviously out of the building. Some of them, they'll take it home so that their families can see it. Um, they may leave it somewhere. If they go to a coffee shop or the mall, they leave it there on accident. That kind of opens up doors for other people to read it. So now it's not just an in-school type of ordeal. Now the public is involved. So does that hurt your position then? Yes. <laughs> 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 Let me hear from the students. Anybody want to go first? Uh, and Joe, you, yeah. uh, do you want it published? No. 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 We're, we're, Why not? We're against it. Well, we just feel like it's going to, it's just going to inflame a bunch of emotions and feelings that are going to distract uh, the students from our goals and our mission, which is to graduate and move on to bigger and better things. What about, and I'll again quote the part of the statute that I quoted before when we considered the Red Ribbon. 7182 says that freedom of expression shall include without limitation of the rights and responsibilities of students collectively and individually to write, publish, and disseminate their views. Uh, well, I, also, I, I have heard that um, they can't be punished merely for expressing their personal views on school premises unless school authorities have reason to believe that such, such expression will substantially interfere with the work of the school or impinge upon the rights of other students. But is it the work of the school? Well, I, I, would, I would say that it would. Who's our publisher? Callie Wright, is that what I called her? I think, yes. Who, who wrote, I, I would who say wrote free speech? Callie Wright. Yeah. The, is, is this <coughs> not? Well, Callie Wright's view, it, does she not have the right, again, to publish and disseminate her view? Well, uh, it, a, a school need not tolerate the student speech that's inconsistent with, the, with its basic educational mission. And I, I feel like that- You're quoting from the Hazelwood case? Yes. Okay, I feel like all right. That, I feel like that her, uh, 
paper is inflammatory and it, and it doesn't cooperate with the school's edu uh, basic educational mission. And that, you know, even though the government could censor the speech or uh, could not censor the speech outside the school, that the school can because it, it flies in the face of the uh, Parent Amanda Phillips, who was um, on what side again? I'm against it being published. Okay. So another point from Hazelwood, um, quoting from Hazelwood, we hold that educators do not offend the First Amendment by exercising editorial control over the style and content of student speech in school-sponsored expressive activities so long as their actions are reasonably related to legitimate pedagogical <laughs> concerns. But in Hazelwood, it was, and I bring from it, it was a high school paper published by students in journalism class. So is that different, or do, you know, is that different enough that here it's strictly the students' views and therefore not school sponsored, and therefore, you know, Laura and therefore myself can't control the, the publication of it? Is it being published in the school? Like that wasn't my question. My question had to do with the nature of this newspaper here that we're considering versus the nature of the newspaper in Hazelwood, where the nature of the newspaper in Hazelwood was it was published as the, a result of the journalism class. This is a bunch of students that are interested in disseminating their views, got together with their advisor, and come after school, publish it. Grant, granted, they are using school facilities to do so. So. You don't have an advisor that would have ultimate say over the product that came out. Um, let me hear from the other parent, Jim, before I come back Just to you guys. Just uh, as a caveat to what you were saying, I, again, I think that there's, no, there's really no difference between them putting a pen to paper and uh, verbally expressing their views in um, school. Uh, the school administration uh, itself. I guess would have a right to prevent the school's education images if the image is, is mm. negatively, negatively affected. However, this article, this article has been proven to disrupt the operations of the school in any way. It has? It hasn't. Oh, hasn't, I'm sorry. It has not. Okay. And uh, even if the article weren't written, uh, it is the expression of the First Amendment uh, right of the students to be able to express themselves. Um, and they're not doing it uh, on company time, they're not doing it at school, that we're not doing during school. And it's not, it's not sanctioned by the school or, or they're, they're doing it on their own. So the, the, the argument would be that whether it's put in writing or verbal, it, it's a freedom of expression on the First Amendment that, that they can relay their thoughts, whether in writing or verbally, without fear of being retaliated against. Um, um. Hazelwood, the Spectrum paper that the students wrote, right, right. Um, it was declared as a student press publication, which accepts all rights implied by the First Amendment, which means that um, the school cannot interfere with what's being published, um, and it does not, uh, the students were permitted to exercise some authority over the contents of what was placed in the the paper because it was a student. I'm not sure where you're going with this I, because you should be trying to distinguish it, right? I'm for it. Are you trying to distinguish Hazelwood, though? Yeah, I'm from, trying to say from, that from, that our paper, uh, okay, our paper is also a student press publication and that falls under the rights of the First Amendment. So the school doesn't really have a right to to say what can and cannot to be in the paper, and the students also have a right to have authority over what's in the paper because it's a student press publication. In our case, yes. unlike Hazelwood, but I, mean, I wasn't so getting Hazelwood what you were saying was, at the beginning. Hazelwood, it says that Hazelwood um, also said that the Spectrum declared that as well, that it was a student press publication, and that felt. Oh, what was the ruling in Hazelwood? I'm just arguing. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I have to follow the law as well, and if I, I do have a Supreme Court case in, in which, you know, the outcome of that case was that the, you know, school had the right to, to um, um, control what the, at least what the students in that class were publishing. But again, I'm looking for the difference here, if there is a difference. Laura? This is no different than a yearbook, and so a yearbook's done after school. Um, my Our case, yes. 
Yes, uh, Let's see. sorry. Yeah. Yes, uh, um, my stipend is paid, you know, by the the town. Um, pays the school board, and that's how I get it. Mm -hmm. um, it's published. The publication is um, financed through the. School but you board. just said no different from a yearbook. It actually will have to continue the conversation on Thursday. Um, is it, a year, yearbook is school sponsored. A yearbook is a public forum. Ex I, so I don't know if that, that helps you. Yeah, because I'm against publishing it. Oh, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get this straight. Um, all right, let's continue. Um, I'll collect the signs, so I'll just keep them in the file. Okay, so can we keep these roles? I'll, I'll keep the signs. Yeah, can we, we keep the same, position? The same role? Keep, same. Yeah, keep the same position because we'll finish number this one and go on to number three, so read the rest of the cases. Thank you.